is young. If you don't know me, I'm privileged to be a vicar of St. John's. It's great to see you. Um, yesterday, um, Sandra and I think Peter Molly, you know Peter Molly, who is a, 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 a previous congregation. So they've been doing some you know, finance stuff for our church, for our audit. Um, and when I say goodbye to Sandra, I, I said yesterday, so Sandra, see you tomorrow. And Sandra said, yes, Reverend, see you next week. So I said, okay, Sandra, you're not going to be around tomorrow. No, no, Reverend, my week begins with Sunday. Well, uh -huh. maybe some of you might have different sort of theological understanding, so we're not going to argue about it. When is the day? You know, is Sunday the beginning of the week or Sunday is the end of the week? What do you think? Okay, as I said, we're not going to discuss it. However, it doesn't matter, okay? Because as we come here to worship God, as a whether you feel like this is the end of the week or the beginning of the week, it doesn't matter because God will provide us His rest as we worship Him. As we end the week, end of this week, would you believe that? Also, God will strengthen us as we begin this new week, okay? It doesn't matter. So I want us to remember these two words, rest and strength. And this is Jesus' invitation. Come to me, all who are weary and burden. Then I will give you rest. And we can find our strength, of course, in him and in his presence. So therefore, I want to say thank you that you are in the right place to be today. So thank you so much for coming here. Well, our, the Lent has begun. So last Wednesday, we had Ash Wednesday service. So for the next 40 days, we will take this journey. Uh, with Jesus to the cross. And Lent is a season of repentance and also fasting. And Lent gives us such a great opportunity. It's like a New Year's. I don't know how many of you have been keeping your New Year's resolutions. Well, so, <laughs> yeah. As someone said, I'm going to somehow revisit my New Year's resolution. During this Lent, I'm going to somehow just revisit it and then revitalize it. But, I think Lent gives us great opportunity for our spiritual renewal, recommitment, spiritual growth. So, I just would like to encourage you to just try something where you don't need to really plan really big. Just let's just start with a little, just start little. Like maybe pray 10 minutes a day. Maybe just read the Bible, one, one, one chapter a day. Maybe if it comes to some, maybe two or three chapters, not just only one. But, you know, just start building up something to benefit your spirit to grow during this Lent. I would also love to invite you to our Facebook Live prayer, evening prayer, every evening at 6 o'clock. And also from this week, every Thursday, we are going to learn, um, uh, we are going to run um, the Lent course. Uh, so you are more than welcome to come to our Lent course, 7.30. So something like that. But there are so many other opportunities that you can rebuild your faith in God today. So please join this journey together with me. Well, today we are having all age worship, which means there will be no separate groups. So all the children and young people will stay here in this room. We are going to have some game, yeah, some activity. I hope you will join in and also have some great, great learning so that we can learn from each other and one another together in the spirit. So now let's stand, if you're able, and worship our King and our Lord, our Redeemer, who gives us strength, who gives us rest and peace today. So we'd like to stand and sing together, all for a thousand times.
And please respond with words in bold on the hymn sheets or respond with words in yellow on the screen. Jesus said, For where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. As you promised to be with us, Lord Jesus, we welcome you here today. Let's say together, Help us, Lord, to worship you, to listen to your word, and to pray in faith that we might grow in our love for you and for one another. Amen. So, Almighty God, the Son, Jesus Christ, fasted 40 days in the wilderness and was tempted as we are, yet without sin. Give us grace to dis discipline ourselves in obedience to your Spirit. And as you know our weakness, so may we know your power to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to pass to Richard for our singing time again. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry.
us pray as we stand. Heavenly Father, we have come into this place today that we might know you more. That we might see more of your love, more of your mercy, more of your grace. That we might learn more about the way you walk with us. In our teaching series recently, we've looked at those wonderfully individual encounters you allow us to have with you. Today we look at the encounter that might be had with you in times of grief and in times of despair. And if we, bring, if we come here today with griefs on us, with woes, we know we can cast them onto you. For we know that just as we sing songs of mighty praise and blessing and honour to you who are ancient of days, so you know our sufferings, you know our troubles, you know our woes, you know our griefs, for you shared them. You experienced them yourself on the cross. And this you did 2,000 years ago for those of us standing in this room today in 2023. So help us to feel comforted if we come to you with mourning, if we come to you with sorrow, if we come to you with grief. Help us to still be reminded of the blessings and honours that you bestow on us just by letting us be in this place with you. Help us to feel comforted. Help us to feel secure. Help us to go out, back into Stratford, out into that mission field, stronger and happier and more hopeful than we were when we came in here at 11 o'clock. Help us to go out singing your blessing, singing your honour, singing worthy, 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 and knowing that all we need for that to happen, all we need, is your grace. It is sufficient. It is all-encompassing. It is enough. Amen. Amen. Now that song, Your Grace is Enough, I was thinking back, it's possibly the before time, it's pre-COVID, we, we last sang it, I think, uh, but it does speak, it, it roars to a great chorus that that grace, in all it is, is sufficient for us. So if you know this song, do, do join in with us, please. That grace is enough.
when we say this to the person next to you, God's grace is enough for you. God's grace is enough for you. Well, some of you may not think that, or, or not, not quite, it's not quite that enough, where maybe today's Bible testimonies may unpack you a little bit more about it. Okay. Right, before we read out today's passage, I want to have some game. Well, this game is called Yes, No Game. Okay? Yes, No Game. It's great fun. And also, we have some special reward for this. So, we know we we'll have Oreo. Oreo? Oreo. Yeah, Oreo. Right. So, can I have some volunteers? Maybe two or three or four. Maybe three or four might be great some volunteers, maybe children or young people. I'm going to just give them some priority. Or maybe young and hot, young and hot. <laughs> young older to become. Please come forward, yeah? Yeah, you gentlemen, you gentlemen, yeah, can you come forward? You just raise your hand, yeah, uh, nice. Yeah. Anyone who loves Oreo, please do come. Okay, well, gosh, we have so many volunteers. So, right, first to come. Right. Stand here in the middle. First to come. Come, come, come. Oh, my gosh, we have so many. Okay. Oh, All uh, right. I need three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I just need five, six, four. Okay. We'll see how it works. Well, because. Let's try. Right. All right. So the rule is very simple. I'm going to ask a series of questions. They shouldn't answer. They shouldn't use the word yes or no. Okay. But they have to answer different way. But it should make sense, right? Don't just say flamingo. <laughs> Do you love orange flamingo? You, you can't say that, right? Okay. But something should does need to make sense. Are you with me? I'm going to give you one minute to answer this. But if you say, as soon as you say yes or no, you are out. Not out of the building, but out from this room. Just return to your seats, yeah? Are you with me? Okay. Kind of, let's just start. I'm going to give you a microphone now. Can I use this? One, two, one, two, one. Is it on? There. Thank you, Adrian. Uh, welcome back, Adrian. It's always great to have you back. One, two, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. One, two, thank you. That's it. So we have time on Maria. Ready? Okay. Can you tell us a little bit where you want, Maria? Okay, let's start. Kind of ready? Let's get going. So, kind of. Do you have some friends? Friends. Do you have some friends? Friends. Have you ever been out of your country? Out of country. <laughs> he likes food. Disgusting. <laughs> have you ever failed a test? Failure. Are you a good singer? Are you good at sport? Uh, Are you a good artist? Terrible. Would you hold a snake? Terrified. Do you go to church? All the time. Do you like go on Snapchat? No problem. Do you like taking the friends to on Instagram? No problem. Are you outgoing? Do you like gaming? No. Uh, oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wonderful. Can you tell us Brianna, thank you. Ready, Brianna? You can say yes or no, okay? Are you ready? Maybe, okay. She didn't say yes, okay. Wonderful. All right. Let's start. 
Do you like gaming? Would you hold a, a, a giant hairy spider? Uh, have you been ill recently? Not that I remember. Do you have a sister? I do. Do you have a brother? I don't. Do you have a pet? I do. Uh, do you like to watch and play football? Not always. <laughs> Not always. Okay. Are you athletic? Yeah. Oh, are you shy? Sometimes. Do you like cats? I do. Uh, are you allergic to anything? I am. Uh, can you answer any question properly? I can. Have you ever had swine flu? Not recently. Do you like food? Sometimes. Okay, you answer. Thirteen questions. Well done. Okay, thirteen twelve. Are you ready to go? Are you ready to go? <laughs> Are you ready to go? <laughs> this is first question. Okay, well done, well done. Okay, okay. It doesn't count because there's no time. Okay, ready? Alright. Let me start with this question. Do you like films? Uh, can you be me? Do you think you are beautiful? Sometimes. <laughs> Do you play an instrument? Sometimes. Do you like pop music? Sometimes. Do you like country music? Sometimes. <laughs> I think we've got to change the right answer today, alright? Um, Do you like rap music? Maybe. Are you addicted to your phone? Not really. Have you been on holiday recently? Do you have plans of what you would like to be in the future? You do? Okay. Do you have friends? I do. You're going to just keep repeating, I do, I do. <laughs> Are you going to keep repeating, I do? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> have you ever been out of your... Okay, so how many? 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 times. Okay, I just need maybe two more volunteers amongst you. I think we have yeah, two, maybe which one? One younger one, maybe two younger one. Would you mind? But no, I'll, I'll give you something more. All right? <coughs> would you like to do? Would you want to? Do you want to answer the questions? You say yes. <laughs> He said yes. <laughs> All right, would you like to come? Do you come, come to the center? Yeah. What's your name? Alvin. Okay, Alvin. Can you hold this microphone? I'm going to ask some questions, but you mustn't say yes or no. But you have to answer a different way. Okay? Like flamingo. Coconut. <laughs> well, it doesn't make sense, is it? Anyway, you have to answer, you know, it should be, make sense. It should make sense, okay? Right, let's go. Okay, Aaron, do you have some friends? Screw yeah. this! Aaron has just some friends. I love you. Yes, it's us Well done. Good try. Are you sure? Okay. Can you tell us your name? Shadera. Shadera. Okay, Shadera. Are you ready? Do you want to uh, have some, you know, Easy question or difficult question? Easy. Easy question. Okay. Let's start. Ready? Okay, Shidora. Are you a good singer? Sometimes. Are you good at sport? Sometimes. Are you a good artist? Sometimes. Are you going to keep repeating sometimes? Sometimes? Okay. <laughs> would, you, would you hold a snake? Sometimes? <laughs> Do you go to church? Somewhere? <laughs> Always! Wonderful! Do you like to go... Well, this doesn't make sense. Okay. Do you like gaming? I don't. You don't? Great! 
Do you have a sister? I do. Do you have a brother? I don't. Do you have a pet? Okay, well done. Okay, the point of today's game is that you know, when we've got some big questions in life, we often get the answer which we actually didn't expect. Okay, that is the lesson and the point of this game. So, after, I thought after six Oreos, but there is one more pack. Is that all? Thank you very much. Um, I will try to share this to one each. Um, Sarah, where's oh, Sarah? Sorry, I've got your skill as well. Thank you so much for your participation. Let's just give them a big round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone. Yeah. Thank you for being just here and joining with us. Thank you very much. You can go back to your seat. Did you enjoy? Yes. Did you say yes? Okay, it's fine. <laughs> Well done, well done. Fantastic. So, how do you respond when you receive some answer that you actually didn't expect? Well, especially when it comes to God. It's hard, isn't it? It's really hard and painful. You've been praying, you've been asking for something, but sometimes God answers different ways. Because, of course, we know that the you know, Bible says that God's ways and His thoughts are higher than our ways. How do we respond to that? Well, let's just listen to today's story uh, from uh, Bible, John's Gospel, chapter 11. So I think a couple of uh, children will read today's passage for us. John chapter 11, verses 17 to 37. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said, if you had been here, my brother will, would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha Lurie answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, you replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. After she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house comforted her, noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? He asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man which had kept this man from dying? This is the word of the Lord. Good morning, St. John's. Today's reading will be on John 11, verse 38 to 44. Jesus, once more deeply moved, Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. There was a cave with a stone, with a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, 
but this time he is a bad odor, for he has been there four days. When Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believe you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. When Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of people standing here, standing here, that they may believe you sent me. When he said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped in the strips of lining and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you for your lovely reading, John Dan. Okay, today's passage, so I just intentionally divide it into two. Okay, the first half, um, Jesus arrived, it's a bit late, Lazarus was already dead, and the second half, so Jesus hid. But I don't know how you find this story. Um, is there anything that somehow upsets you? Um, if you didn't know the end of this story, you definitely would struggle with the way Jesus worked. Now, he, he works in ways we don't expect. Who would delay coming to visit your dying friend? If you were Jesus, you would be in a hurry. You know, I would make just all effort to get there on time rather than Delaying. Even Jesus should know. He, he knew that. He knew that Lazarus was dying. And when Jesus came, Lazarus was already dead. And it wasn't, of course, it wasn't what Martha and Mary expected. You know, from time to time, we encounter God whose thoughts and ways are not always like ours. But especially when we encounter big questions in life such as suffering and death. We wonder, where is God? Where is God in our grief? And in this story, I want us to find where God is in our grief. And this story also shows us not only who Jesus is, but also what he came to do. So let's just dive into the story and start with Martha. So Martha comes to Jesus and she says, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And then just moments later, Mary comes up and says the same thing. So, two sisters, same situation, and exactly the same words. But I don't know whether you noticed this. Interestingly, Jesus' response are very, very different. So when Martha speaks, he almost argues with her. Her message is, Jesus, you came too late. But Jesus replies, I am the resurrection and the life. And with me, it's never too late. He's rebuking her doubt and giving her hope. Then he sees Mary, who says exactly the same thing. But this time, his response is the complete opposite. He doesn't argue. In fact, he's just practically speechless. Jesus stands alongside her in her grief, and he bursts into tears and can only say, where is he? And just imagine that you are making up a story of a, a divine figure who had come to earth in disguise as a human being. Then you just keep him speaking in an elevated tone. I am the resurrection and the life. Oh, yeah? And you would never imagine that such a divine person would get sucked into Mary's agony and just stand there weeping. So why? Why would he be so strong one minute and so vulnerable the next? Well, the truth is that this is not a story someone made up. And this account shows us dramatically that Jesus is both fully God, a truly God, and fully human. Jesus is truly God and fully human. Not just God disguised as a man. Not just man with an air of deity, but the God-man. When Jesus first 
meets Martha, we get a glimpse of his deity and power, his God. But that doesn't explain the totality of who he is. The very next morning, uh, moment, he breaks down, sobbing beneath the weight of Mary's grief and in the shadow of the grave. You think that if a person were really divine, he wouldn't be that emotionally exposed. But he is. So here we see deity joined to human vulnerability. His love pulls him down into weeping. And despite his claim that he is the resurrection and the life, that he is God, he responds to Mary in this way because he is fully human as well. He is one with us. He feels the horrific power of death and the grief of love lost. You know, no other religion agrees with this. No religion other than Christianity believes that the transcendent creator, the, the author of life, became a weak, limited mortal who felt the full horror of death. And here we find the overwhelming beauty of Jesus in this paradox. Bible says he is the lion and the lamb. Despite his high claims, he's never pompous. Despite being absolutely approachable to the weakest and broken, he's completely fearless before the corrupt and powerful. He has tenderness without weakness, strength without harshness, humility without the slightest lack of confidence. But of course, this leaves us a question. Why did he do this? Why did he do it? Why did absolute power have to enter into our weakness? Let's just look at verse 38 if you have Bible. And it says, Jesus once more, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. So the, our English translation simply said, Jesus was deeply moved. But the original Greek verb means to bellow with anger. Jesus is absolutely furious. You know, he is bellowing with rage. He is roaring. Who or what is he angry at? You know, Jesus is raging against death. You know, he doesn't say, well, look, just get used to it. Everybody dies. That's the way of the world. Resign yourself. No, he doesn't do that. He's mad at evil and suffering. And we must understand that evil and death are the result of sin and not of God's original design. He did not make a world filled with sickness, suffering, and death. But you might ask, if God is unhappy with the world as it is, why doesn't it just show up and stop it? Why doesn't it just appear on earth and end all evil? Have you ever thought about that before? I do occasionally. I still do occasionally. Why not God? Just come. But the problem is this. The Bible says that the reason why the world is wrong is because of the human heart. So, so much of the misery of life here is due to selfishness, pride, cruelty, anger, oppression, war, and violence. So that means, so if Jesus Christ had come to earth with the sword of God's wrath against the evil, none of us none of us would have been left to tell about it. We all have evil and self-centeredness deep inside us. However, Jesus did not come with a sword in his hand. He came with nails in his hands. He did not come to bring judgment. He came to bear judgment. And if you read the end of this chapter, you see the dilemma Jesus faced. Later in chapter 11, when the religious leaders see what Jesus has done in this display of power, they realize this miracle made him more dangerous than they ever thought he would be. 
So after he raises Lazarus, the leaders have a meeting. And by verse 53, John says, So from that day, okay? From that day on, they plotted to take his life. Of course, of course, Jesus knew all this. He knew that if he raised Lazarus from the dead, the religious establishment would try to kill him. And so he knew the only way to bring Lazarus out of the grave was to put himself into the grave. If he was going to save us from death, he was going to have to go to the cross and bear the judgment we deserve. He knew what it would cost him to save us from death. And yet, knowing and experiencing all that, he cried, Lazarus, come out. Lazarus, come out. You know, God looked into our world, the world He made, and saw us destroying ourselves and the world by turning away from Him. And He filled His heart with pain. You know, He loved us. He saw us struggling to escape from the traps and misery that we created for ourselves. So He wrote Himself in, Jesus Christ, the God man, born in a manger, born to die on the cross for us. So today, He is calling you out from the grave. He is calling you out of the darkness that somehow you feel or you face. He is calling you as He called to Lazarus. Lazarus, come out. Young, come out. I'm here. I am with you. I'm for you. So let us hold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of this world. Behold who Jesus is and how he loves you during this Lent period. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to sing just one song. And as we sing this song, I just want us to Respond to God. First in prayer, in singing. You don't need to stand if you don't want. You can just sit and ponder the message that we just heard this morning. And what is the darkness that some of you are facing now? What is the questions that you've been holding, you've been asking to God? Where are you in my grief? And the answer that God wants to pass you is, here is my son. And I hope that you can find the strength and peace in Jesus Christ. And as we sing this song, I hope you will find the rest and peace.
Heavenly Father, we just give you praise that you are the resurrection and the life. We can find our hope, our strength only in you. Thank you that you are calling us come out from the grave. Thank you that you have given us your life. Just help us to remember you, that you are the power of resurrection. You are the life. And also at the same time, you are our friend who is with us and for us. I just pray that your spirit will continue to bring us your peace and comfort, especially those who are going through difficult times. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And please do take a seat. Let's just continue to pray with Alice. try something a little bit different. Maybe we've tried it before, uh, and I don't remember. Maybe some of you have done this other places, but we'll do a little bit of praying all together out loud. If you don't want to do it, you can just pray in your heart. I'm sure God God will hear you, and uh, we'll have a, maybe an unexpected answer, as uh, Young was praying about this morning. So, um, I'd like you all, if for the first part, we're going to give thanks. So, I've got a list of things, but I'm going to step back from the microphone and pray the things that are on the list here. But um, you're all welcome to Please, if you would like to join with me to stand up. Don't worry, if you don't want to, it's fine. Thank you. And if you can put your hands up. So we're going to start with giving thanks. And is it possible, can we have the one, maybe the one minute timer? Is that okay? So when the timer starts, uh, you can all start praying out loud. Just let's give thanks to God the amazing things that we've seen um, this week or so far this year. Just something I want to give thanks. We'll do that for one minute together. Thank you. Go. <coughs> Thank you. If you could please now, um, the next thing we're going to do is going to pray for those who are sick or bereaved here in our church community. So if you could please turn and look, if you're on this side, if you can turn to look towards everybody on this side, if you want to, thank you. And if you're on this side, if you can turn and look to everybody on this side, we're going to pray for everyone in our church. So we're praying for um, those who are sick, those who are bereaved, and any other needs that we know of. Um, here in our community, our church community, we can pray uh, again out loud or um, you uh, can pray in your heart as you like to for another minute. Thank you.
we're going to continue to pray for those um, uh, other uh, prayer needs um, beyond and um, outside of our church. So if you could please turn and look towards the walls of the church. So if you're on this side, look towards that wall and beyond, out the windows. We're going to pray for others. And guys on this side, if you can look out that direction, pray that side. Um, so we're praying for, for others beyond our church, in our community of Stratford, uh, beyond East London, beyond London, uh, to the world. So we're praying for others. Thank you. Lastly, if you can please turn towards the door, we're going to be praying for our mission links. So uh, there was a sign above a church I used to go to that said, at the, at the back door, it said, you are now entering the church. So we're going to just be praying that as we go out from uh, this time of replenishment uh, and rest and worship together, we're going to go out and uh, make Jesus known and help others wherever we are this week um, to have those encounters, those transformational encounters with Jesus. We're going to pray for our mission links. You may know the mission links that we have. In particular this month, it's faith in schools, um, but also pray for any mission uh, that you yourselves are doing or that you know of others doing. For our mission links. Thank you. You can turn back around <laughs> see your lovely faces. And then I'm going to count down from three, and if we could all say amen together. Three, two, one. Amen. amen. Thank you, church. Thank you, Alice. It's great, isn't it? So as a, as a community of Christ, and we pray together as one heart and mind. It's amazing, as always. All right, we're going to sing us one more song. Uh, this is From Heaven, You Came, and this song reminds us of the gift that God has given us through His Son, Jesus Christ. It is about God's grace, okay? And by His grace we live. It's nothing else but only His grace. So let's just respond to God by giving ourselves, acknowledging that all we are and all we have belong to God. And during the singing, we we'll collect our offering. And if you want to make a donation by card, you can find our card machine at the back of the church. If you are here as a guest, 
just stay as a guest. You don't need to uh, worry about giving a ride. But if you want to make any donation, feel free to make it. So, would you like to stand and sing together? From heaven, you came. is nearly coming to an end so I've got some notices for you for this week 
So first of all, just once again, welcome to St. John's uh, on site and also online, those uh, join our service online, just welcome. Um, well, just let me just quickly check if there are any newcomers today, if you are new here today, can you someone raise your hand? Welcome, and welcome, it's great. Just give them a big round of applause. So after some please say hello to me and hello to our church wardens. Um, Church was James over there, Richard is there, and Corinne's at the back. So please to say hello. And also please stay around for the refreshments. Uh, we'll serve you tea and coffee and biscuits and cake. And please share your fellowship. And just right after the service, there will be newcomers uh, welcome tea. Uh, those who sign in. So we have six newcomers who sign in uh, for this afternoon tea. Those who haven't done the the registration. Um, there will be another one in April. So we are going to run this newcomers afternoon tea every other month. So the one next will be the last Sunday of April. Is it 30? So it's, today it's, it's, it's February. So not, not much in April, every other month. So the one will be uh, in April. So we're going to leave a, a sign of sheet so you can just write your, down your name on it. That would be great. Um, I have to pass some sad news that our parish administrator Kay, uh, she lost her mom uh, last week, last Tuesday. So please just keep holding her in our prayer. Of course, there are several uh, members of our church who lost their, their family members. So let's just continue to hold them in our prayer. And after the service, also we have a prayer ministry training. Uh, it will continue today at St. Stephen's room. And the next one will be next Sunday as well. And also I want to give you a special, very special invitation to our monthly evening service. We call it High Five. This evening at 5 o'clock in the Christchurch room, uh, we are going to deal we are dealing with some hot topics. And today we are going to talk about hypocrisy. Why there are people who are hurt in the church? Isn't church to be a loving place? But why there are so many people who are hurt? in the church? It's a very intriguing question, isn't it? So if you're interested in just hearing the answer or wants to somehow bring your thoughts or join that discussion, please do come to this evening service at 5 o'clock. Our Saturday Gajibo team, our evangelism has, will resume this Saturday at 11.30, but you can find the detail on the newsletter or the other week meetings is on the newsletter so you can have a look um, before we celebrate birthday so wedding events to read I just wonder whether Luke and Shimari are, are you here today? Luke and Shimari? No? Right, so today is their third Sunday Okay, for their bands of marriage. So, I published the bands of marriage between Luke, Luke, um, Ruel and Lim Hugh, a single of St. Stephen's Canonbury Parish, and Shumari Bianca Melody, single of this parish. So this is the third time of asking. So if any of you know any reason in law why they may not marry each other, you are to declare it now. So congratulations, Luke and Shimari. So we just pray for God's blessing upon your journey, this new journey, and return the union in, with God in your marriage. Amen. Bless you. All right. So birthday to celebrate this week. If you're here and I read the name, can you somehow stand up so that we are going to sing the birthday song? So. Uh, good love, Omoko Okoro. And is it Kyla Cooper? And Paris Elizabeth Simpson? Are you here? Oh, yeah, just there. All right. Stay there, just yeah, stand, standing, okay? Um, Brianna Zibok Fridan. Yeah, I have the one came. Yes or no? Winner. Right. Okay, and then Alex Ipekfu. 
Alex, it has to. Jonathan, Stacy, no. All right. And it can uh, operable. Operable. It can operable. Okay. Peter, Kayanjan, and Millie Ferguson. And Lucy appeal. And Lucy, welcome back. And Japanese Olunjobi. Okay, right. Okay, those who are here in the building want to really say big happy birthday. So we're gonna sing together. Okay, ready? your card. I forgot to give it to you. Sorry. So you're going to be 13. <laughs> so this week, we will still ask questions. And then, you know, in the Bible session, we can ask questions when we are in doubt. It's fine. But as we just continue to come to God, struggling with our life issues, but the main thing is just be open, honest, ask, and God will answer to you. Well, I want us to just sing this final hymn as we leave this place, just knowing and that you know, God is faithful God. So let's sing together. Great is thy faithfulness. Would you like to stand with you?
actually welcome Ayo. Ayo, she's back from, she's, you have three months, plenty months at St. Mother's. So welcome in Ayo. I just thought, well, you know, you can share by next Sunday what you belong. Very briefly, that would be a great time of testimony. That would be awesome. Just before you leave, let me just bless you with God's blessing. Just want to use the priestly blessing in the book of Numbers. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. So brothers and sisters, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.